Hi, I'm Kyle from Music Tribe Technical Support. I'm here today with Guitar Center to talk about the new Behringer Wing Personal Mixing Console. The Wing Personal Mixing Console is the new digital mixer from Behringer. The Wing is a fully stereo mixing console featuring 48 stereo input channels, 28 stereo buses, a 10-inch capacitive touchscreen, touch-sensitive rotary encoders, a 24 fader fully customizable control surface, and a new point-to-point -point routing system that allows you to select from 374 different inputs and outputs. The lighting on all of the scribble strips, LEDs, soft buttons, the patch panel in the rear of the console, and the underglow of the console can all be adjusted and personalized to how you like to work. With the flexibility, customization, and portability of the wing, it's perfect for your touring act, house of worship, concert venue, or recording studio. The Wing I.O. features 374 inputs and outputs, starting with the high-quality Midas Pro Series microphone preamplifiers, the eight XLR outputs, an 8x8 eight eight quarter-inch TRS aux input and output section, and all of this digital I.O. We have two audio over IP ports that can be configured either for remote control data or optionally Wave Sound Grid or Dante enabled so that the console speaks Waves or Dante natively. We also have a 48 by 48 channel USB interface for connection to your DAW for recording purposes. We have three AES-50 ports. Now these can be connected to any existing M32 and X32 units as well as any existing stage boxes like the Behringer S16 or the Midas DL-153. Next you have Stage Connect, which is a new development from Clark Technic. Now Stage Connect allows you to pass 32 channels, 24-bit, 48K digital audio down a single XLR connection. This can be configured as 24x8 or 16x16, 16 16, depending on your purpose, maybe a personal monitoring system or a breakout box. We also have an AES EBU input and output, as well as the 64x64 64 expansion card slot, which right now has the Wing Live expansion card, which is a dual SD card recorder, each capable of 32 by 32 inputs and outputs. So you can use one card for playing audio back while you use another for recording. These have separate controls. Here, I have a session here that I will play back. Right now we have a virtual sound check playing back from the Wing Live expansion card. I'm going to go into our routing menu here and show you the source system. Now, rather than channels existing as a number, we think of sources existing as their purpose. So channel one and two here are a stereo drum track. So I can link the sources by just hitting the stereo button. That'll link channel in, uh, input one and two into a stereo source. I can then rename the track drums change it to a red color, and give it an input symbol. After I've done that, I can also add tags. We'll call this drums, and this would also fall under the category of an instrument. Now, any other source with these same tags can easily be added to a mute group or a DCA group by its tag. Now I'll set up the rest of my input sources from this virtual sound check. We already have the drums. Now let's get the bass here on input three. This is also a stereo channel. We'll assign that. Five and six here are the rest of my instruments. And seven and eight are my lead vocals. Now that we have the sources set up, colored, named, and linked, we need to assign them to input channels. To assign a source to an input channel, simply select the channel, open the input section, we're going to add the main input, which for this channel will be our drums. So once we assign the stereo drum source to the channel, the channel automatically becomes stereo, and here's our drums. Channel 2 will be our bass. Channel 3 will be the rest of our instruments. And channel 4 will be our lead vocals. Now I have my main input source assigned here on channel 1, but say I wanted to add another input source, say for a backup microphone or a virtual sound check, I would select the alternate and add 
my alternate input source to be able to easily switch back and forth between my main input and my alternate input. This menu also gives me access to a variety of different input options, such as my balance, digital trim, clarity inversion, low cut, high cut, and tilt EQ, as well as an input delay. The next step in the processing would be the gate. Now here we have the powerful wing gate. You have a multi-touch screen here to be able to adjust the gate parameters. You also have a key filter that can be a low pass, high pass, or band pass. You also have here a representation of the frequency spectrum of your key source. Here we have the wing EQ. This is a very powerful six band EQ on all input channels and an eight band EQ on the output channels. Now adjustments can be made using the touch sensitive rotary encoders or the multi-touch touch screen. You can grab all of the bands at once, make adjustments as you please. You can also select a single band and use the band solo feature if you want to hear only that band in your monitors so the audience can't hear you narrowing in on nasty frequencies. The Wing EQ also features hardware emulations such as Poltec, SSL, and others. The Wing compressor is a powerful compressor that gives you control over all of the parameters you would need, such as threshold, ratio, knee, and then your envelope. Here, we also have a key filter. Now the wing compressor is very powerful, but let's say you're looking for a specific sound that you can only get from a certain piece of analog hardware, like an LA-2A, 1176, a red compressor, or others. Each channel also features pre-fader and post-fader insert points. This can be used to add an amplifier model or a de -esser or an additional EQ if needed. The post fader insert point can also be used as an auto mix group. Now once you've done your channel processing and you're ready to send your channel out to your mains, the main out screen for each channel is here. You can select from one or all four of the main mixes. You have your panning control here. You can also narrow your stereo field, widen your stereo field, or completely invert the stereo image of the channel. This is also your output fader here, and your solo and mute control. As well as sending to the main mix, you might also want to send to some buses. Now, we have 16 fully stereo buses that you have an independent send from each channel to every bus. So if you want to send to bus one, just like that, we also have an EQ that is specific for the send from the channel to a bus. Let's say somebody doesn't want all of the low end from the bass in their monitor, you can dial some of that out without affecting the main front of house mix. The wing also features a 16 stereo space effects rack. You have eight slots for premium effects, such as reverb and delay, and another eight slots for standard effects, like additional EQ, compression if needed, as well as pitch correction and amp modeling. So if I was going to set up a delay for my main vocal, I would select a bus to use for the effect bus, go into the bus's insert point and choose a delay, make sure that bus is up, turn up my vocal channel, then hit the sends on fader button, and we're going to send the lead vocal to that effect bus now. Now the meters menu is going to show you everything that's going on on the console right now, from all of your input channels, auxes, buses, matrices, and mains. Now if we need to take a closer look at a certain set of channels, all we have to do is tap on that bank, and it'll pull it up on the screen for us and show each channel strip. It's also going to put these channels down here in our middle bank of hardware faders. Now, we set up the fader layers in a way that makes sense. That's where we added the user 1 and user 2 layers. So if I select user 1, and hold down the view button here, I can create my own layer. So let's say I want my lead vocal and my delay bus, and I can even add the send from my lead vocal to my delay bus as a fader here. And then I have a completely customized fader layer that only includes exactly what I want to be working with. The library menu is also very flexible. Here on the main screen, you can save your snapshots. You can also set the recall scope. 
if you only want to save or recall certain channels or you want to exclude certain channels. You can also choose which parameters of your channel strip, your effects, or your routing that you want to save and recall. The channel strip section here will also give you an immediate overview of your selected channel. It'll show you your input properties, the level, your bus and group assignments. You also have immediate access to your EQ here, as well as your gate, compressor, insert point, and your send out to the mains. Now, everything we're doing here can or cannot be reflected on the main screen just by calling it up here. Now, the great thing about being able to separate what's happening here and what's happening here is that you can actually have two people working side by side without interfering with each other's workflow. Now, the 24 fader control surface features three distinct sections. You have 12 input faders that are generally going to be used for your input channels, although they can also be used for your bus channels or your user layer. You have the bus and DCA section here, which again, this can be used for whatever you want, but by default, this is going to be your buses and your DCA groups. Then you also have this separated section over here. This would typically be your mains, or you can create a user layer to assign your money channels, say your lead vocal or again, your reverb, so that you can control those over here. Again, this is another situation where one person can work on this section while another person is over here working simultaneously. Now here we have the custom controls section, which has rotary encoders as well as soft buttons. Let's say we wanted to assign this encoder to control the pan of channel one. We'd open up the menu here, select pan, drums, and then you can see that this is now the pan for that channel. This section can have up to 16 different presets and also features a massive jog wheel down here at the bottom. Let's say I wanted to assign this to the decay time of a reverb. I would select effects parameter, VSS3, decay time. And then when I hold this button, this is now going to adjust the decay time. 48 stereo channels means 96 active sources in the mix. So you can imagine that going through and naming each channel on the surface here might be tedious. That's why we have the Wing Copilot app, which can be used on a mobile device like a tablet to be on stage. So while you're connecting your input sources, you can be naming and tagging all of your sources mobily so the front of house engineer can focus on what they need to do. So that's the Behringer Wing Personal Mixing Console. With all the flexible routing and customization options, you can see how it's perfect for your concert venue, house of worship, touring band or recording studio. To check it out, visit your local guitar center or guitarcenter.com. <laughs>